Hello, welcome back to the Buccal Easel tutorial series. Today we're talking about the sequential voltage source. I'm going to call it the sequencer for the rest of the video because I think that's a bit overly fancy. The point that they're making, or the point that um, Don Buchler was making when he named this module, is that it's more just it's more than just a fancy way of making different tones. It's used as a voltage, a control voltage generator, and those control voltages can do much more than simply generating fancy notes in an arpeggio. First things first, let's just hear it. Plug the sequential voltage source, one of the sequence outputs, into the pitch of the oscillator that we're currently hearing, give it some modulation amount, and start messing with our sliders. We've got five distinct tones, notes being played by the oscillator, the pitch of those notes is being modulated by the sequencer. So the sequencer isn't making sound itself, it's not making those notes, it's sending control voltages into the oscillator and modulating the oscillator's pitch. Really important to bear in mind to remember what the sequencer is doing, it's not a tone generator, it's a modulation source. I don't want that happening all the time in runaway train mode. I want to impose some kind of control over it and the easiest way to do that is with an envelope. So let's get an envelope involved in the equation. So my envelope generator is set to sequencer. If I turn the envelope generator to something else, now some kind of weird kind of hybrid thing shouldn't have done that let's get back to sequencer mode the envelope generator is taking us a trigger off the sequencer the sequencer is taking its timing from the easel's clock so we set the speed of the sequencer down here relative level of the control voltage outputs on our five sliders. And now that we have an envelope, we have much more control. A little bit of decay on the, on the set, on the tones. It's nice. Okay, great stuff. So we're up and running with a basic sequencer in the classic mode, modulating the pitch of the oscillator. Let's change that to modulate timbre instead. Steve Hillage will be proud of me. Now let's do both at the same time. Let's trigger both oscillators simultaneously. Take yet, yet another output. I'll come out of here as well because we can have three connections. Why not? Come in here. Get the envelope firing both gates. And I saw this example in the uh, in the user manual, so it's pretty cool. I'll show you send the modulation oscillator through the inverter instead. And now we've got basically inverted um, controls. I mean, oscillator one is playing high, uh, modulation oscillator is playing low. So it's actually quite an impressive job that the sequence is doing at the moment. It's doing two quite distinct things. The first thing is firing the envelope generator. That's, we have a semi-modular synth here. You know, this stuff is wired in the background, invisible to us. When we click the sequencer switch, we send the sequential voltage source triggers, these five blue lights that are coming on are triggers firing the envelope generator. So that's one thing. The envelope generator is in turn opening the two gates. 
but it's also directing its control voltage outputs via its blue output socket into multiple different destinations. And this is the point that I'm trying to make. You can send these signals wherever you want. Just so happens we're sending to two pitch-based oscillator modulations and one tone-based modulator uh, um, oscillator modulation. So that's all very exciting. Now those five independent triggers that we're hearing, we can turn each one of those on or off with our toggle switches. Now, an important point to note about these switches, they control the firing of the sequences, the, the sequences triggers. They don't attenuate the control voltage coming out of the output. These control voltages are still being output from the, the sequences output sockets at each stage of these blue lights. These blue lights are not kind of disappearing on steps three and four. It's just that steps three and four aren't generating triggers anymore. And we can prove that very easily by taking it back out of envelope mode. Don't need them anymore. Um, and we'll, we'll just ignore modulation oscillator two. That was a bit fancy. We're just going back to a nice simple example. When I give the uh, complex oscillator direct access to the outside world again, and we're not firing off an envelope, you'll hear all the distinct tones. So these control voltages are still coming out of this output. We're just not using the triggers. Now at the moment, as things stand with it being like basically hardwired directly into the output, the sequencer isn't triggering, isn't having any effect anymore. The fact that the envelope generator is firing these um, triggers is irrelevant because the envelope generator isn't attached to anything. So two completely distinct features of operation. Don't get carried away thinking these switches silence this part of the circuit. They don't. They only stop it from triggering whatever it happens to be connected to at the moment. It's um, connected to the envelope generator. Okay, instead of taking our timing from the clock, let's switch to keyboard mode. And now the blue light is stuck. Every time I press a key on the keyboard, we're going to step forward by one step. So I'm pressing the same key as you can see on the interface. And every time I press the key, I'm triggering the sequencer, which is then generating the new control voltage output, which is having the effect on the pitch and tone in the complex oscillator. If I press a different key on the keyboard, I'm now generating a new set of five tones. So the keyboard input is a control voltage in its own right, and that is having a modulation effect on the sequencer itself. We can decouple that dual nature of the keyboard instruction from the oscillator by turning keyboard mode off. And now it wouldn't matter which key on the keyboard I play, we're gonna get the complex oscillator's bass tone modulated by whatever um, control voltage settings are set on the sequencer. So there's the low rumbling, whatever it is, B flat of the natural oscillator. Well, it's actually a B flat modulated by whatever this gate is currently set to. So I'll just start hitting a random key on the keyboard. A new random key on the keyboard. Doesn't matter. Now the keyboard is acting purely as a delivery mechanism for the trigger and it's having no tonal um, impact on the sound because we've disengaged that feature from the complex oscillator. So all of these different modules interacting, you have to be aware of all of the features of each of them at each time. And obviously in this video series, we've dealt with one module at a time and kind of get that plate spinning. But when we then use that module in conjunction with another, you have to remember all of the features of that oscillator. Where's that tone coming from, you may think? Well, the complex oscillator has a keyboard setting that 
determines that different keys that you play on the keyboard generate different control voltage outputs from that module. Let's have a look how we can interact with the pulser. So now here we are in uh, free mode. So the pulser is basically in control of its own destiny. And then everything that we've learned about this, the, the pulser now applies. So because we've switched to sync, this is now quantized and is all based on the host tempo. Switch to clock mode. This then becomes the means by which we control the sequencer. Now I've loaded a new patch up to talk about the um, particular quirk of the way that the keyboard pulser uh, trigger fires into the sequencer. What I've done here is I've got a really, really simple patch. The sequencer's just plugged into the oscillator's pitch and not doing anything else. So we've got this kind of static tone. And uh, I'm gonna press a key on the keyboard, which is gonna fire the pulser. The pulser is gonna trigger the sequencer and we'll hear these five different tones. Straightforward enough. Now it turns out that if the pulser's gate is still open, when you send the next keyboard instruction in, uh, the sequencer doesn't step on. So if I mash this keyboard fast enough, the sequential voltage source will stick on gate one. And if I slow down and allow the pulser to finish its envelope, it steps on perfectly happily. If I increase the period of the pulser, which means the gate is open for longer on each note, then the effect happens at even slower keyboard rates. So now I'm able to play the keyboard consistently quickly. You can see and hear how often I'm pressing the key and the sequencer never steps on because the pulser gate is never fully closing. And once it does fully close, then the sequencer steps on. So just beware that that's how it's wired that the gate needs to be fully closed before it will accept the next trigger uh, trigger instruction. I can only generate that effect in keyboard mode. All of the others seem to be absolutely fine. So there you go. It's just one of those things. Beware of it. I've come across it in, um, in presets where there are sequences set up. We'll deal with that, this stuff later. It's in the advanced pages where if, if it's generating a sequence and playing lots of notes, then the pulser can't effectively fire and the sequencer because the gate is basically open all the time. Finally, we have this stages toggle switch set to three, four or five. Set myself up a nice, simple little envelope based um, sequence here. And you can hear it's playing all five steps. If I switch to three, it will just cycle around the first three. So this is how you permanently disengage one or two of the, of the steps of the sequencer. And now it's just gonna play those four notes. We're in pulser mode here. I increase the rate of the pulser to make it play faster. That's the sequential voltage source covered. Hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful. If you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications. You'll make sure not to miss the next episode. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.